This looks incredible and wondrous. Trout just subsurface and ready to eat your dry fly. A gimme. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. On pressured waters, trout holding in flat water will challenge everything you have to offer before you get one to net. On summer days when the sun is high in the sky, not a breath of wind nor a cloud, with nothing but bright light and a blue sky canvas above, these trout press your best plan, your best methodical approach, your best setup of long, fine leaders and small flies culminating in the best timing of an angled cast that has to land without any splat factor. All that while pursuing a trout that is as likely to refuse a natural insect at the last second because a leg was too stiff or a wing was shimmying. These are the days of shy eats, late refusals, and trout cowering at the hint of a wayward foot of 5x. But it can be done. While flatwater trout at the peak of summer can be difficult, Pay close attention as we share how we take on five such gorgeous trout. Like you, we have to apply ourselves the best we can, and even at that, there are things well out of our control that impact our success. you find value in our free sharing of knowledge and experience and want to support us? Gain access to our extended length ad-free videos as well as our in-depth producer's notes that turn every video into an in-depth fly fishing class. Join our Patreon group today. One of the things I think about as I walk is I might not be targeting this water below me, but I know half an hour, an hour from now, somebody else will be fishing along here. So I try to come as far back along the fence line here as I can so that I don't spook the fish off the bank for the next person that might be coming along. Odds are low today that there's gonna be somebody right away, but so what? Always try to think, hey, just because I'm going there, I don't have to pooch the water right along shoreline for the next person. Just one of those little things as you're walking along, just go, hey, wait a second, what's my impact on the next person? You know, as, as many people are out here now because of COVID and all that kind of stuff, you gotta start considering people a lot more. And it really helps if we think about the next person and try not to have an impact on them as we go. Okay, so from up on the cliff, this looks really obvious. Big rock on the bottom out there, rod length out, and a little bit downstream. And it's just subtle. I'm not sure if he's eating spent spinners, or mergers, or what's going on here. Hasn't been a lot to do today. And 
Just look, there he is up there. Just, there he is, right in that seam. It's actually a really good fish. Yeah. Going for it, eh? Right up in here. Right there. It's a wee ways out, too. Just gonna splay the wings on my caddis. I'm going with caddis because, well, he's targeted as on spent stuff or merger stuff. And I don't know, usually it'll take a caddis. I'm gonna stand up on this rock, actually. I need a little height to see. Hopefully I don't screw it up. There he is. Oh, right now. Yeah, uh, he went further over. I'm gonna just gonna wait for him to come back. Okay, here we go. Should be it. Went right through his lips. Is he gone? Right through his damn lips. Okie dokie. So this guy, after I missed it, went down deeper. And then he went downstream, sorted himself out. And then he started feeding again. And he's right now, right out in the seam, just a little further up than he was before. And I'm just going to try to get myself in a position where I can reach over this little seam here is right there. It's gonna wait for another rise or two here. So the reason I'm not thrilled about this side, and if I had the time, I'd walk all the way down and around and cross the river and get over there. Um, ugh, I really should be doing that, but I missed it because of that. And he's right up here. And the problem is this inside current here is keeping me from getting a clean drift to that fish out there. Here we go. I'm gone. Refused. And double refuse on the same drift. Okay, here we go. I just went with the small gray. Yeah, I like that. She absolutely did not want to take the brown one after the third or fourth refusal. And I just knew that after hooking her on that, it wasn't going to be a good show. So I had to go size 18 polywing caddis on 5X. These cliff banks are really cool along here. Um, Dave's up high, of course, and he's sighting for me today, and I'm down here, but yeah, so gorgeous. Get these beautiful, beautiful Alberta roses just hanging right off this rock. Yeah. Okay, so they are quite inside. Cool. 
So we've found a couple fish here rising. That last rise, was that the rainbow or the brown? That's the rainbow. Okay. Okay, so not getting to be not too far in front of me, hey? Rainbow. Well, right now, I, I need to see a rise because I can't actually see the fish from my angle, Dave. There. Yeah, I saw that. I, I'd like to get a bit closer if I can. The brown is the rod length to the right. To the right of it, okay. Brown's coming up. Brown, do you see it? Yeah, right there. Okay, here, right on this, right inside. Okay. Yeah, it is on. Anywhere near it? Okay. He absolutely, I didn't have a chance, hobbled it. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't have a chance on that. Don't worry about it. Nope. <laughs> I bet from you, where you are, eh? So I pretty much had no chance on that fish. Um, total explosive take on uh, the dry and just no chance. Um, he just he just came and it's like one of those fish that just sometimes just come up and whack it. You'll notice that we targeted the brown trout first. Shallower, closer to shore, and most likely to rise on station, and most likely to spook if Amelia cast over it to take on the rainbow. Well, always take the brown on first. We switched focus to that rainbow. A gimme, right? Uh, yeah, no. If you could see the fish from Amelia's position at all, maybe you could get into position and make a cast. Instead, she barely saw the dimpling rises lost in the glare from her position. There's nothing more frustrating for either of us in our positions, and it demands great communication. This was a classic rainbow, moving well about the run, searching and not stationed. As it was, we worked together and she showed great deliberation in her timing and cast location until the luck of being blind to the fish and random timing cost her. And how far, so I'm pointing. Right in there? Okay, right there. Are you? Okay, here we go, Dave. What the frick? That wasn't me. No, it wasn't. I hadn't even landed. Oh no, okay. I'm I'm waiting. Okay, hey, <laughs> Fuck. The, well, coming up you were laying out. Yeah, the angles, right? So this this rainbow here when I was casting, Dave said he was rising at the same time as he saw my tippet and he just spooked. Okay, guys, we got a riser that's not far out from me here. Really in the shallows. I probably should take this nymph off, eh? 
Yeah, that's pretty darn shallow. I'm thinking I should be able to see him any moment now. He's there. Ooh, this isn't going to be easy to see at all on these rocks. Wow. <sighs> it totally blends with the rocks. I have the idea of where he rose out here, yeah. Okay. But yeah, truth is I can't see that worth crap. It's a really interesting light and I cannot see it. Oh, I'm gonna have to go with a small uh, elk hair caddis. Yeah. Well guys, we've got a fish that just rose here right in front of us. And uh, I decided I need to switch up from um, a polyene caddis that I had on that had kind of a brown poly to it that I could just could not see on top of this kind of substrate um, right in front of me. And so I've actually just put on again a size 14 elk hair caddis and uh, I'm going to give it a go. I'm really hoping this fish might rise again because I don't have an exact spot and we're talking pretty flat water. So yeah, like what angle Davey? If I point, no more left. Yeah, more left even. Really? Yeah, he's, he's right on the drop off. I wouldn't go too much closer, but okay. Good cast from there, but ain't okay. It's funny that I just can't see his shape from here right now. It's all angles. Yeah. Would you put him about three rod lengths for me right now? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to go, Dave. Okay. See me? Not high enough. No, that's perfect. Just to the right. A foot to the right. Same cast. Okay. Oh, there he goes. This is going to go into his zone, but he rose way out to the right of it. I can't see him, love. No worries, man. He went way to the right. Yeah, and he's just downstream where he rose. Okay, I'm going to go for it. Did you see me there? He's just there. Now he's left shallow again. He's back to where he rose. Is he? How about that? Yes! Oh, what a fish! What a take! Oh, no, 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 no! Strip, strip, strip! Yep, what a take! Yeah! What a beautiful fish! Nice eye on that, Dave. Yeah, that was gorgeous. By no means done. Try to get behind him. Try to bring him shallower. Keep his head up, keep his head up. Head up, head up. Head up and in the net. Yeah! Nice fish! Woo! Woo! Wicked! Yeah, man! Really cool. He's got spots, a couple spots right where his uh, one of his pec fins joins Good. his body. That's awesome. It's really neat. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, really cool, cool fish. It was just glowing. The eat was spectacular, yeah. and I'm so glad I went with my gut and said, "Hey, I can't see that fly." We're, yeah. You know, a test, a test cast, couldn't yeah. see the fly, and uh, so good that I went with that elk hair caddis. Okay, oh, yeah. you ready, That's there, Dave? And down, and away she goes. Oh, what a spectacular fish! That's so nice, so so nice. Just going home.
I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm absolutely tickled that you caught that fish. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where I was up on that bank looking across, I saw it rise twice and I was like, oh, that's going to get caught. Oh, yeah. But you I just... also knew that from where you were, you're going to see nothing but sheen. Yeah. And I could not see that fish. It's no. amazing. I was not far away from that fish, but I could not see it and I needed Dave's eyes. And then when it well, rose, I saw the rise. The rise. Yep. I needed the rise and he rose close to me and then got the cast again. And yeah, right when he decided to move up a bit, yep. and yeah, That's got him. Gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful Good job, brownie. Adam. I think your rainbow's going again. Thanks, man. So there's a fish, I'm pretty sure a fish holding right on this slab. I think I just saw it feed to its left. And with any luck, there he is, yeah, absolutely. Right on that slab, top left side of that slab. See if I can get this in here. Yes, right on there. Wicked. I just saw him, just saw him, just saw him. Cool, that was really fun. Again, water's low, so he's just doing the sideways dolphin thing along those rocks. Isn't that amazing? Just on that slab rock. Come on, bud. Nice brownie, I think, love. I just saw the mo movement uh, and the shadow wow. from his belly. Wicked. Wicked. Yeah. A little bit. Sometimes that's where they pop out right here. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, Dave. Fold that thing. Keep the head up. Keep the head up. And yeah. Gorgeous, Wicked gorgeous awesome. fish. Stunner. It's a New Zealand That's kiwi the baby. Catch you were for today. Right. What's that? Said that the catch. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Stunner. Yeah. Absolute stunning fish. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Yeah. Look at the yellow on him. Yeah. So buttery. So that's the really cool thing about big flats like this with rock ridges in it is Little depressions, little depressions. And you don't know which seam, which depression the fish is gonna nose into. And all you can do is look at the ones you can, look across, scan across for rises. Anything moving across is gonna be a dark shape on that white or cream. And that fish just went whoop and came back and was like, gotcha. And as soon as you see that, you can get a one cast to lead. You know, those are the fish that are friendly fish.